So in the last video, we used the count if function, which works really well for the number of invoices. But here, in order to get the quantity, we're going to explore within that family and use the sum if function. Because what we really want to do up here for, say, Maxio, is we want to be able to sum the quantity of four together with the quantity of three to get a total of seven. So let's dive into it. If we hop into the cell right down here, we can put in equals and then just start typing some if like this. And we can see it come up right there, some if singular. So we can hit tab. And it's first asking for the range, which is not incredibly descriptive. But what it's looking for is it's looking for where it can find the items, the various items. And we're going to select all the way down this list here for the range. Let's put in a comma. Now for the criteria, the criteria is going to be obviously over here, Maxio. Okay, now we put in a comma. The last thing it's looking for is what to aggregate. So in this case, we what do we want to sum? Well, we want to sum up all of these numbers here, which is the quantity. And then we can close the brackets and hit enter. And we definitely want to make use of some good cell locking here so that we can copy this. Let's pop into the cell, tap F2, okay? We're going to use the left arrow and go across this blue reference here to range. Let's tap F4 once, so that's completely locked. And the last reference here to the sum range, we're also going to tap F4 once, so that is totally locked. Let's think about this one carefully. Um, what we'd like to do here is only lock the column B, but have the 26 unlocked. So let's tap the F4 key once, twice, and then third time is what we want. The dollar sign in front of the B locks the B, but there's no dollar sign in front of the 26, which means it can change to 27, 28, etc. So let's hit enter and we're all good there. So now that that's all locked down, let's just hold down the shift key. Control D for a fill down. Great idea to check our work as well. Let's go to this bottom cell, tap F2. And as we can see, this range here completely locked, as is the purple one, but this red cell moved down perfectly. And now that we're in the cell below, we can hit Alt equals, which is an auto sum, and hit enter, and we get the total quantity of 29. We can check our work quickly as well. Let's just visually look for Maxio. We can see it comes up there on two invoices. We can visually see that they add to seven and we can see a quantity of seven right here. Now we can also use the sum if actually for the revenue. In fact, if we look here at Maxio, what we wanna do just as we summed these to seven, we could also sum up the revenue here, which would get to about 2,500 roughly. So this is where that cell locking that we did very carefully on the quantity is going to come in really handy. Let's go down here and we're going to hold down the shift key and we might as well grab the bottom total as well. And we're just going to do a copy over to revenue and a paste. Now we're going to need to make a modification to this formula. So let's go into this first entry here. We're going to tap F2. And what we effectively need to do is take this purple range here and move it over so that it's summing revenue. You could do that with the keyboard by going in here and changing the D to an F like this, just putting in say F there and F there, and that would do it. What you can also do if you'd like using the mouse is grab these and then move them just like this across over to revenue, and then we can hit enter. Now that we've made the change here, we need to copy it downwards. So let's just select with the shift key all the way down to the last item here, but not the total, and then hit control D, which copies and pastes everything down with a fill down. Let's discuss now what to do for this price column. We have within the family of functions a count if, a sum if, and an average if. We know the count if is not appropriate because we don't just want to count the prices that are entered. We also don't want to sum them. For instance, we wouldn't want to take these two numbers together and sum them to 710. That would not be appropriate. We have an average if function. The problem there is it's going to do a simple average of these prices, which completely ignores the deviations here in quantity. So the correct approach in order to get the weighted average price that we're truly looking for is to use revenue and quantity to back solve for it. So in here in the price column, we're going to say equals the total revenue that we have 
divided across the quantity that was actually sold. We hit enter. This gives us a perfect weighted average price. So what we want now is to be able to copy this formula all the way down to the bottom, but we don't want to mess up the different formats we have with bold on the bottom. So we're going to do a copy, control C. Now use the shift key, highlight all the way down, including the totals, and we're going to do alt ES, or you could also do control alt V to have this come up, which is a paste special. Then we go down to formulas. So we're only pasting the formulas and we hit enter and that's done. Now, one really nice spot check that we can do here, just to check our work, is we can see that we have 12 invoices, and down here, we're showing 12 invoices. Quantity of 29 is consistent with the quantity here. The price of 278 and the revenue of 8050 is consistent with what we're getting down here. So everything looks great. So great work completing that quadrant of the dashboard. And now you've added a new family of functions to your skill set. For instance, you have count if, sum if, and average if as well. In the next video, we'll check out yet another family of great Excel functions that we can use to aggregate. So in the last video, we looked at a family of Excel functions that had count if and sum if and average if. We're now going to look at the plural versions of those formulas. So for instance, count ifs, sum ifs, and average ifs. Now for this demonstration, let's zoom in just a little bit so we can see really clearly what we're building, just like this. So in this case, we're going to use a sum ifs function right in this cell. There'll be two conditions. Condition number one, we want the item to be maxio. Condition number two, we want it to be a single item or a single item yes. So let's start off in this cell by putting in equals sum, and then we can use the arrow key to get down to the plural version, sum ifs, hit the tab key. Now, the first thing it's asking for this time is the sum range. Before the sum range was the last thing it asked for, so watch out for that. So the sum range is the thing that we want to sum, and what we want to sum up here, in this case, is the revenue. So we've selected all of the revenue numbers. Let's put in a comma. Criteria range one will be all of these item numbers over here, or these item names, I should say, and then put in a comma. The criteria one itself will be this item right here, which is Maxio in cell I7. Then we put in a comma. Now it wants criteria range two, which will be over here. It's all these yeses and nos. And now we put in a comma and it wants criteria two, which is just up above here where it says yes. Now we close the bracket and hit enter. Now let's do some really careful cell locking. Pop into the cell, tap F2. We want these ranges to be completely locked. So the first one that's in blue here, I'm gonna tap F4 once, okay? The one that's in red here, I'm gonna tap F4 for that one as well. And then the third one, which is green, we're also gonna tap F4 once to completely lock them. Now let's put some careful thought into these cells. Cell I7, we only want the I locked but not the seven. So let's tap F4 one, two, three times so that that is accomplished with only the I locked. Now over here, we want the opposite. We don't want the J locked so it can move across to K, but we want the number six locked. So let's tap F4 once, twice, and that'll do it. So the six is locked. Let's hit enter. Now let's test whether or not those cells are locked correctly. From this cell, let's use the shift key and highlight all the way down and then one over to the right, and we're gonna hit Control D for a fill down, now Control R for a fill right. Now you may wanna be thorough and check every one of these cells, but in fact, you only need to check one of the diagonal cells. What do we mean by that? Well, we started in this cell right here. So if we go down and then to the right, we get to this cell, which is diagonal from the original cell. If we tap F2 and do a test, we're checking whether or not it responds correctly when it goes up and down and left and right. What do we see? We see these three ranges here, all perfectly locked with no movement. This cell here moved downwards perfectly, but it always stayed in column I. And then this cell here moved across perfectly, but it always stayed in row six. So everything's working perfectly. So we can hit enter, and now we know that in fact everything's working for all of these cells in this range. So what's next? We're going to use one of our absolute favorite Excel shortcuts. 
we're going to go into this cell here and tap Alt equals, which is a auto sum. And as you can see, it works horizontally as well as vertically. So we hit enter now. And now we're going to highlight down with the shift key, control D to fill down. Now what we can do is go to the bottom here and also do an auto sum, Alt equals, hit enter. And now we can highlight across in a control R, which is a fill right. So we could spot check our work a little bit too. Right here, we have this total revenue number, which is perfectly matching the revenue that's right down here, 8050. Let's take a quick look at these two Maxio items, for example. We know that the revenue here is adding to 2480, and that's the revenue that we're seeing over here. And that's also derived completely from non-single items. So it looks like it's working really well. So let's jump ahead to the next video. There are some nuances and limitations in this family of functions we just discussed. We'll walk you through them in the next lesson. We'll see you there. So as we mentioned in the last video, there's some slight nuances when using the plural version of these formulas, like some ifs, for example. Let's just look down in this bottom right quadrant. This is where we're going to go through some calculations just to illustrate to you exactly what some of these limitations are. So let's start off down in this cell right here. And we're just going to use a simple sum if function to grab the revenue for soloist. Okay. So in this cell, we're going to put in equals sum if, just like this. For the range, we're going to grab all of these items that are up here. We're going to put in a comma. The criteria is going to be here, soloist, and then a final comma. And we want to grab the sum range, which will be all of these revenue numbers that are right here. We can close the bracket and hit enter. Now let's pop back into the cell, make sure things are locked down properly here. So we want to lock down this first range here with an F4 and the second range over here with also an F4. And we're going to leave that other cell unlocked. Now we can highlight down and do a control D to get these copied into the next cell. Now down here, if we were looking for the total, we would probably put in an auto sum function quickly like this, alt equals, and then hit enter. And that would give us the total of 2,400. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to delete it out. We're going to try to build this up using some ifs, since we have two conditions, one condition here and a second condition right here. So let's go down into the cell here where the totals are, put in equals, some ifs, plural, and we're going to hit tab. And first we want the sum range. So that's going to be all of these revenue numbers that are right here. Let's put in a comma. Criteria range one will be up over here, all of these items, comma. Criteria one will be soloist. And then we're going to put in a comma. Criteria range two will be the same as criteria range one. It will be all of these items that are right here. And then we put in a comma. Now criteria two will be different. It will be right here, the word extreme. And then we're going to close the bracket and hit enter. So the result here is very peculiar because we know the correct result is 2400, yet we're getting a zero. Let's check our work. If we tap F2, we can see that we've correctly selected here the sum range. And then we have criteria range one, criteria one, which is soloist, criteria range two, and criteria two. Everything looks perfect. So the reason here that some ifs is not working is because some ifs can work for and logic, but it can't work for or logic. For example, up here, when we asked for the number of items that were sold under Maxio and that were not single items, that is an AND condition. We need both of those conditions to be true for the formula to sum. But then when we built the formula down here, we were actually looking for it to use OR logic. We were saying we would like the revenue for soloist OR extreme, and the sum ifs function cannot perform OR logic. It can only perform AND logic. So what we're going to do down here is drop a couple of footnotes in place. And we're going to ask you to pause the video if you could and put these notes in. We want you to understand that some ifs only works for and logic and it does not work for or logic. So it's great to know that limitation of the sum ifs function in that it can only use 
and logic. Many people don't know that about the function. So you're one of the select few who totally understands it now. The other thing to keep in mind is you can put as many conditions in there as you want. So there's really no limit. It's quite a powerful aggregation function. Now let's look ahead to the next video where we're going to look at some lookup functions. We'll see you there. So as you probably guessed by the name of this chapter, we're going to be discussing lookup functions here. Really important to understand how they work and the pros and cons of them because they're so common in Microsoft Excel. So one of the things that you're going to see from this discussion is that over here, we definitely prefer the newer XLOOKUP function to its predecessors, which were HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP. So you may be wondering, why are we looking at HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP at all if there's a newer function and you actually prefer it? The reason that you need to understand these older functions like HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP is so that you could audit them in older legacy files. Also, you'd then know how to replace them with the newer XLOOKUP functions. It's also great for you to know the limitations of the HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP functions and also where they are very, very prone to causing errors in financial spreadsheets. So it's great to know all of this so that you can convince people on your team to swap out the older functions for the newer XLOOKUP functions. We're going to discuss all of those pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages in this chapter. So as you can see down at the bottom of the Excel file, we're on the lookups tab. We're going to be looking at lookup functions in this chapter here. Now let's get familiar with the data that we're going to be working with. We can see here the title commission rates. And what we have here is we have all of the items listed from one to five and the associated commission rates. Now this set of data here is in horizontal format, but we also supply the same identical data down below here in a vertical format with the item numbers down this column and then the commission commission rates here. You wouldn't normally see the data in horizontal and vertical format, but we wanted to show you in both formats here so you can get familiar with using lookup functions in both of these formats. Now let's take a look down further on the Excel file here where we have commission calculations. What we're going to be doing in these chapters is looking at how to pull in information using an HLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, and then the two ways to pull it in with an XLOOKUP depending on the orientation. So really we're going to have commission rates across here and down to the bottom, which are all identical. And then we're going to use those commission rates with the revenue here in order to calculate the commission down this side. Now, as we mentioned in the previous video, we definitely prefer the XLOOKUP function to its predecessors, the HLOOKUP and the VLOOKUP. As we'll see in these videos, the HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP functions can introduce a lot of errors into financial spreadsheets. Now, the XLOOKUP function came out in 2019. So if you're using a version of Excel, like Microsoft Office 365, that's come out since 2019, you're going to be good to go. Now, even though we definitely recommend the XLOOKUP function in all cases, it's so important for you to understand the HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, since you're likely going to encounter some legacy files that have these lookup functions in them. Also, if there are people on your team that really don't believe in the new function XLOOKUP, then you'll be able to show them after these videos where the shortcomings are with HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP and how prone they can be to producing errors in your financial spreadsheets. Lots to cover, so let's dive in and get started.